Why? Well, look outside. It's 8 o'clock and it's already light out. Well, in Finland, it stays light until midnight. How do you know? Have you been to Finland? Well, no, but they call it the land of the midnight sun. They do? I wish they didn't make us wear these outfits. I think they're comfortable. And it looks like we're all going in for surgery. Are we? Are we having surgery? Am I? Relax. See, that's what they want you to think. Huh? Want you to relax and get comfortable. Once you relax and get comfortable. BAM! Surgery. Relax! She, she thought I wanted them. Who? The doctors. She's not one of them. She's exactly like one of us. I am. One of you. I wish I could have surgery. I couldn't think that my spleen has been acting up. Do you think I could have an appendectomy? No one is having surgery. We're here for our group session. I wish there were more people in our group. Then there'd be more people to talk to. Why do we have to have group anyways? Because we're all exactly like crazy people. Okay, what do you guys think about this? No bars at the zoo. What if the animals get out? No, no, see, there's a high iron fence on the entire zoo, so that way the animals are just free to roam inside the zoo, just like in the wild. Wouldn't that be dangerous? No, no, see, the people travel in these little cages with wheels and a motor. What if you were one of those people and you had to go to the bathroom? Yeah, you'd step out and a deer would attack you. A deer? Why not a lion or a tiger? It is a well-known fact that more people are attacked by deer than by lions and tigers combined. <laughs> And when do these attacks happen? As a matter of fact, they happen at night, while people are driving in their cars. You just go to the bathroom in the cage, just like the animals do now, see? It's all reversed! I wish the doc would get here. Yeah, let's get this session over with. I think they're watching us, hmm? Observing us to see how we react under pressure. What pressure? Okay, okay, what about this? A peanut butter plant. While the peanut butter plant is still growing, we inject the peanut with jelly, so that way it can save more time in the kitchen. What do you guys think? You should be an inventor. Thank you! I wish I was an inventor. Can we have some peace and quiet when the session starts? I'd like to get my thoughts in order. Do crazy people have ordered thoughts? We're not crazy. We're eccentric. <laughs> they lock us in here because we're eccentric? I can't be eccentric. I'm not rich. I think we must be crazy, but, but that's what we want. We're not crazy. How can you be sure? All right, let's have a vote. Raise your hand if you think you are crazy. All right, now raise your hand if you think the person next to you is crazy. Okay, what about this? Instead of raising our hands, what if we all had levers to pull and one pull the lever would count as one vote? Enough! I forbid you to talk. Mm -hmm. I wish you had forbidden me to talk. <laughs> I forbid you all! Excuse me. Are you Sam Johnson? Who wants to know? Are you Sam Johnson? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, who are you? Well, I guess there's no harm in you knowing now, Mr. Johnson. I'm deaf. <laughs> You're deaf? Yes. I think you're here for a group session. Hardly. I, I'm here for you, Mr. Johnson. So, uh, you're, you're dead, as in dead as in the Grim Reaper? That's right, Mr. Johnson. That is one of my names. Uh, one of those letters will come in handy about now. Hey guys, uh, I think this guy's here for group session, but doesn't know it yet. Who? This, this guy. What guy? This, the guy right, right here. Imaginary friends are not in your profile. They can't see or hear me, Mr. Johnson. Why not? Because I'm deaf. I will be here to those who are about to die. Uh, can you guys see this guy? White shirt, clipboard, bad suit, anyone? No one's there. Now that's it, Mr. Johnson. You have exactly 15 minutes before to be on our way, so suggest well, that- well, well, I'm not Mr. Johnson. What? You've got the wrong guy. I'm not him. But when I came in and asked if you were Mr. Johnson, you said- Maybe, this. maybe. As in perhaps, could be, could not be. But, but, nothing. I'm not him. Hey, guys, is my last name Johnson? No. no. See? But I appear to you. Yeah, well, that's your fault, not mine. 
Then which one of them is he? I'm not telling you. But I'm no snitch. <laughs> All right. Guess I'll do this, do this the hard way. <sighs> Excuse me, everybody. I'm looking for Sam Johnson. Where did you come from? That doesn't matter. I, what does matter is I need to know which one of you is Sam Johnson. Don't tell him. He's death. Would you stay out of this? No. He's a grim reaper. Everyone, don't tell him anything. You're death, huh? Thought he'd be taller. I wish he was taller. Why do you want Sam? Well, when he said it's true, I'm death, and it's Sam's time to uh, to come with me. We may be crazy, but we are not that crazy. There's no way you can get us to believe that you are death. I, I don't care if you believe me or not. I just need no, I just need to know which one of you is Sam Johnson. We're not telling you. Okay, what do you guys think about this? Instead of the Grim Reaper, you can be the Grim Farmer. <laughs> so that way you can ditch the sickle and, you know, ride a tractor. That way you can plow the souls to the afterlife. And, you know, just ditch the sickle because no one, no, one, no one uses a sickle anymore. <laughs> hey, where is your sickle? It's just a prop. <laughs> that isn't important right now. What is important, I think I need to know which one of you is Sam Johnson. First, I can eliminate the woman. Why? Because the name is Sam Johnson. Sam is in Samuel? Or Sam as in Samantha. I'll cure it. Well, which is it? I don't know. Well, what does your notepad say? Just says Sam. Hmm. Looks like you got, you got a problem there, buddy. Would you like to join our group session? It's supposed to start in 15 minutes. Look, I'm, I'm afraid that's impossible. I've got to be gone in 15 minutes. Make that 13 minutes and 45 seconds with either Samuel or Samantha Johnson, or they going to some serious precautions. Okay, here's the deal, mister. We don't really believe you are who you say you are. You see, if you really were deaf, we'd tell you about Sam Johnson, no problem, but as it is, there are some things that are worse than death. For instance, you could be a DMV employee. Or, or a politician. Or like an IRS auditor. Or a proctologist. Or a dentist. Or a proctologist slash dentist. Or maybe you're even a math teacher, and we'd hate to give Sam up to a math teacher. I am none of those things. Oh, then perhaps you wouldn't mind showing us some identification. I don't have any identification. Then how are we supposed to know who you are? Because I only appear to him. Hey, so nice try. But the rest of you couldn't see me. How do you know we can see you? I wish I couldn't see him. Maybe you were like those plastic people's modeling clothes in stores, and that's why you didn't see you. You know, the government puts cameras in those things to keep an eye on us while we're shopping. Okay, what do you guys think about this? We have mannequins, a photo of mannequins in the car, so that way it can pop up, put people in the passenger seat, and we can all drive in the car full way. <laughs> now, Mr. So-called Dev, why do you think we couldn't see you? Because I only appear to those who are about to come with me. But you appear to all of us. I don't have the time. Usually I would hang around the room undetected until I was sure which one I'd take. But I just don't have the time. So, you broke the rules? Yes, yes, I, I, uh, I broke the rules. <sighs> just thought I could break this one time. I wish I could break the rules. You shouldn't break the rules. You'd end up just like us. Yes, I know. I just did, I just wanted to make up some time. <sighs> I'm gonna be in so much trouble. Can't you guys just be reasonable? Do you even know where you are? Perhaps we didn't see you when you first came in because we're all crazy. Dear. You can say that again. I think he's a doctor trying to spy on us. All right, Mr. So-called Death. Let me confirm with my colleagues, and we'll get back to you on that. All right. We agreed to help you out. Oh, great! I, I can't tell you much. I appreciate this. If you can prove to us that you are truly deaf, then we will tell you about Sam Johnson. Proof? Yes. I think you're a doctor trying to observe us to see how we cope with death. I see. Then I shall prove it. Everybody look at that window. 
see the birds perch on the telephone line, pay attention to the third one to the left. You killed a bird? Convinced. And don't you have to wait until it's the bird's time? Big deal, I do the same thing with my BB gun. All right, you're dead. Good, I'm glad that's settled. Now about Sam Johnson? All right, all right, Sam Johnson is definitely one of us and is in this very room. And which one of them is he? We're not telling him. <laughs> but you agreed if I showed who I was, then Then you... we tell you about Sam Johnson. Weren't you listening? Sam Johnson is one of us and is in this room. Oh, you people are trying my patience. What are you gonna do about it? I think you should get me a notebook, one with more details. I had one. Let me guess, you lost it. No, I didn't lose it. I just left back at the the place. Nine minutes. I think you should invent a time machine, and that way you can go back in time and take a class on deductive reasoning. Wait, you? I can eliminate you. <laughs> Why? Because when I first came in and asked if your name was Mr. Johnson, you said no. Then you asked literally everybody else here if your name was Mr. Johnson. They said no. Aha! Gotcha! All right, all right. You got me. Good. One down. And what is your name? Oh, I'm Sam Johnson. What? Yeah, I was just messing with you. I'm Samuel Johnson. It's true, he's Sam Johnson. And what is your name? Samantha Johnson, nice to meet you. Oh, uh, Samuel Johnson, pleasure. I'm Samantha Johnson, have you met? Uh, I'm Sam Johnson. Sam Johnson here, nice to make your acquaintance. I've been very patient, but now I'm done. You forced me to a position that I don't want to be in. That's life. Yes, I suppose that's true. So I guess I'm going to make some other arrangements. So we win? In a sense. Sam Johnson, whoever you are, you have a five and six chance that you will make it tonight. Um, what do you mean by that? Eeny. Meeny, miny, mo! I don't feel so good. Sue, what's wrong? I, I don't, I don't know. What is it? What did you do to her? You did this to her. Yeah. Why? She's not the one you came for. Look, other arrangements had to have been made. Other arrangements? You mean Sue? Yes. Well, that's gotta be against the rules. It'll cause some small inconveniences, yes, but it won't cause as much trouble if I just came with nobody. That's not fair. No, that's not fair, but neither is life. Oh, how am I to die? Samantha Johnson? Yes. Interesting. I would have never guessed. I'm sorry, I'm ready to go. You can release her. You don't understand, Samantha. You've won. You've cheated death, and now you get to That's all right! She was just trying to protect me. If it's all the same to you, I'll go. It's my turn. I'm afraid it's too late for that. Other arrangements have already been made. Well, unmake them. I'm Un ready to go. Unmake them? Oh no, I've already made my decision, and it will stand. I am not allowed to make any more changes. But Sue's my friend! Don't worry, Samantha. When her real time comes, you will join her. Please, you can't do this! There are just some rules I can't even change. How can you be so cruel? I didn't want to take Sue, I wanted the one I came for, but you all changed that! We won't let you take her! She's as good as taken. He's right. I can feel it. You see, there's just one more thing to do. What's that? In approximately six minutes, I should just simply touch Sue and she will come with me. Well, I've got news for you. You're not going to lay one icy finger on her. That's right. We won't let you. No. No. You have to get through me first. You'll have to get through all of us. Then please, just tell me one thing. What the? Where did he go? He's gone. And how do you propose to stop me? How did you do that? You must remember who I am. I am inevitable. Sue, I'm so sorry. What do I do? How much time do I have left? About five minutes. Sam, what happens if you don't touch her? Oh, I don't even want to think about it. If I don't touch her at precisely the right time, the consequences will be... Oh, I don't even want to think about it. 
I would like to have one last group. Group? Group session. That's why we're all here. We're waiting for the doctor to conduct our group. I see. She always loved our sessions. Could you wait until after our session? I am afraid that's impossible. I have to touch her precisely at 8.15. Then let's have our session now. But the doctor's not here. So what? We know what to do. <sighs> well, would you care to join us? I'm afraid I wouldn't know what to say. Won't you honor her dying wish? I don't think she would want me there. What? Be scared? No. Then sit down. You can have the doctor's chair. I, I guess it couldn't hurt, but we only have five minutes. You'd be surprised what we can accomplish in five minutes. All right. In the absence of the doctor, I would like to welcome everyone to group for this evening's session. First, we have to tell everyone what our problem is. Deb, why don't you start? Okay. I'm a dreamer and a wisher. A what? I'm always wishing for something else. At least, at least that's what they tell me. I'm ne never satisfied with what's in the present. But I wish I was. Good. Ron? Oh, but there's nothing actually wrong with me. It's everyone else who's out to get me. <laughs> if you don't believe me, read the paper. Listen, the cattle mutilations are up this year. Thank you, Ron. Sam? Ron, oh, I'm Sam. Um, I usually question everything. Like, why did death come for me? Bob? Actually, my problem is that I am a genius. I have all these great ideas. I'm an idea man. And you know, Mr. Death, you'd be interested in this one. What if we had a mechanical lever inside of the casket so that way you could lift the arm of the corpse? And that way, at a funeral, a loved one can walk up and shake the arm of the corpse. Yeah. See, it's really it's like that that always gets me into trouble. All right, I'm Anne, and my problem is that I always like to take charge and control everything. Then why is that? Because I know everything. Sue, so, are you feeling up to it? Yes, yes, I want to participate. I'm always comparing myself to others. I'm sorry, my answer wasn't as good as any of yours. It was just fine, Sue. The doctor would be proud of us, admitting our faults like that. What about you? Me? Yeah, the doctor always participates. I'm not sure what to say. Just tell us one of your faults. I don't think I have any. Excellent, now you're really opening up. Yeah, yeah I thought that was very hard for you to admit, pal. <laughs> now we have to say something that we like about ourselves. Oh, 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 me first, okay. I am an idea man, like, okay, what if we fed tuna fish mayonnaise before we caught them so that way it would save steps in the kitchen? How do we feel? I like the way I can imagine better things. I just wish sometimes my wishes would come true. I like the way I can spot things that are out to get me. I like the way I can compare myself to you guys. It makes me feel good. I'm glad I know more than anyone else. I like that I have an inquisitive mind. Well, I'm fair. I treat everyone equally. The most unequal thing you can do is treat unequals as equals. Now it's time for explore our past. And what's that? Well, we talked about something from the past that has affected our lives. Ah, trauma. This is kind of fun. Fun. Well, I don't know about your idea of fun, but uh, we've met before, actually. We have. Yeah, see, so uh, when I was in elementary school, I had this great idea that I would try to bomb this nearby hill called Warm Springs. Bomb? Bomb meaning like all the way down, straight down, no slalom, no slowing down. Okay. Pick it up speed until you crash into something or end up in the middle of the street. <laughs> but no, uh, everyone at school had heard this great idea that I had, and they all showed up. And what happened? Well, everyone was there, and everyone was looking at me, so I couldn't back out. I was scared to death. <laughs> I was scared to death. <laughs> Well, uh, I let gravity do its work. I got on my skateboard, and I was about three-fourths of the way down, and I was going 30 miles per hour, and that's when it happened. 
what happened? I hit a pebble and I went flying about 20 feet and that's when I knew I was gonna die and everything kind of slowed down and I was very aware of my surroundings and that's when I saw you. Well, you standing in the back of the crowd watching me. Me? Yeah, uh, when I fell, I rolled and somersaulted and then I stood back up. I looked back down at myself and I had a few scrapes and big bruises, but overall I was okay. I was fine. I lived. I beat you. It just wasn't your time. Then why were you there? No, I don't really remember this exact incident, but, you know, I go into places just in case. You know, just to make sure. Just in case, I thought you only arrived to people when it was their time. Yes, but you know, some people take matters in their own hands and you know, seem to insist on going before their time. When I was a little girl, Mrs. Porter had a cat named Snibbles, and one day he got stuck in the tree. I remember she was so worried. We put out food for Snibbles and we called for her, and that cat would just not come down. I remember thinking, that cat is either going to plummet to its death, or it's going to die of starvation. One day, one of the neighborhood boys started to climb the tree, and it was a long way up, but he got there, and he brought the cat down. I remember Mrs. Porter was so happy and so thankful. I'd like to do that someday. Save a life. Can you see into my future? Will I save a life someday? There's only one thing I know about anybody's future. Oh, I just thought that'd be wonderful. Save a life. Be a true woman of no regret. A true woman of no regret. A true, true woman of no regret. I thought about dying before. When I was younger, there was this boy. He was so handsome and charming. He was perfect. I wanted so much for him to like me romantically. But he didn't. I remember thinking I would just die if he didn't like me. What happened? Nothing. After a few weeks, the feelings went away. He was off my mind. Now, I never really told anyone, but I felt kind of stupid that I had obsessed about it that much. I got beat up in fourth grade. I was walking home from school and there were some older boys looking for someone with a bully and I was all alone so they started chasing after me and I ran and I ran so fast they couldn't catch up with me. When I got onto the block I, I looked around and they were still chasing me but I knew I put enough distance between us that if I just did one more block I would have made it. And right there <laughs> Matthew Alexander turned around the corner. See, for my grade, I was small. Uh, he, he was big, and he got held back a year, so uh, he was the biggest boy in our class. And he started walking towards me and smiled, and I thought he would, you know, help me, protect me. And then he, then he grabbed me. He held me down until the other boys came. I was screaming, he was laughing, and they threw me in the dirt while all the other boys started pouncing on me. He threw a mixture of the, the, the dust and, and the tears. Oh, they were just laughing. Next day, we were all playing dodgeball, like it never happened. That's terrible. I'm over it. Very good, Ron. I'm glad to hear you feel you're over it, even though you remember it clearly. Um, how do you feel about this Matthew boy? I hate him. I see. Well, I also had an incident in grade school that hurt me badly, though not in the same way. We all had to write an essay entitled, Where I Will Be in 20 Years, and there was this one girl who did not do her essay. So she took the pile of papers and she randomly picked one out, and surprise, surprise, it was my paper. So, she erased my name from the top and wrote in her own and put it back. And then the next day, when the teacher asked me why I did not turn in my paper, I explained to her that I did. So, we looked through the pile of papers and we found it. 
the handwriting of the girl's name did not match the rest of the paper, and the teacher called her parents, and she got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> and, and, she blamed me. <laughs> Can you believe it? She blamed me, because she was caught cheating. I got into a vicious fight with my sister. Oh, let me guess, over a boy. I wish it was something as noble as that, but it was something as petty as money. Money? Yes, money makes the world go round and it keeps sisters from speaking to each other for years. And when I'm gone, will you let her know it was my fault? Please? Was it your fault? It doesn't matter now. Just let her know. I'm sorry, Brittany, please. Sure. I will, I promise. Well? Well, what? It's your turn. Not sure what to say. We all shared something from our past. Any regrets? No. Anything you feel sorry for? No. Nope. Anything you want to get off your chest? No, not really. Really? Out of all the people you've taken across the other side, there isn't one person you've had second thoughts about? Well, uh, there was this one guy. Yes? Now he deserves what he got. What he got? Yes, as you know, there's a judgment and consequence. Of course. Well, this guy was rotten. He'd done things, bad things all of his life, and one night during a shooting with, during a robbery, uh, I had a dumb calling. Of course, you're death after all. Exactly. But the thing is, you know, he seemed like he had a good heart. Like, you know, if he had a little more time, he could have repented for all the rotten things he'd done, and maybe things would have turned out differently for the guy. You never know, but it was his own fault. I guess so. There's that, then there was that lady that caught in the car accident last week. <laughs> her husband misses her so much. Sure, it's just one of those things. I try not to think about it, but sometimes it's just so hard. It would be hard for anyone. But there's nothing you can do about it. You see, I have my rules. You understand. Rules are rules. <laughs> not all soldiers in the war. Oh, there, there, one <laughs> Yesterday, Mrs. Jackson's German Shepherd. <laughs> And she gave a letter from them and then it pops in here and I had to take three of them! Of course I don't know why I got stuck with this job! Somebody's gotta do it. I know, I know, but why does it have to be me? Like, I, I'm so glad that I have to kill that bird! No, I just need to be allowed to exist! Oh, no, you're not that bad. We're actually useful and necessary. I am? Sure, you're being too hard on yourself. <laughs> no one even likes me. Oh, now you're being ridiculous. No, it's true. Nobody likes me. Everybody hates them when I appear. Oh, come on. I don't hate you. You don't? No, I think you're nice. You do? Sure, now just try and relax, okay? Deep, deep breaths. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to take I'm not going to touch her! I'm feeling better. It's a 15 and you made me forget about touching her. Did I? I you did this on purpose. You got me talking and talking and, and you made me forget about touching her. So you can't take her now? No! You seem to that. <laughs> she did that twice in one night. Not too bad. Yes. Very good, Samantha. Very good indeed. So I saved your life. Yes. Save your life. This has been a true moment of no regret. A true moment of no regret, huh? That's right. I'm ready now. All right, Samantha Johnson. Right this way. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Sam. Good luck, Sam. I will remember other talks. Thank you, Sam. I'll miss all of you. Don't worry, Sam. They'll be seeing both of us again. Okay. Ready? Yes. I sure hope they have group in heaven. Heaven? Yes, Samantha Johnson. Heaven. Congratulations. <laughs>